Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today the weather is pretty nice to go out before another cycle of rainstorm comes back tomorrow. So I decided to go to my neighborhood park to sketch the uh, autumn scene. So even when sketching outdoors, I use very minimalistic tools. So basically, in the beginning, I use one or two fine liner pens, waterproof, because I'll be using watercolors. The pens must be waterproof. So these are etcher, fine liner drawing pens, extra small brush tip, and this one is a medium tip for more accentuations of dark tones. And and then I paint watercolors with two water brushes. These are very portable, so I don't need to carry a water bottle or like a water container around. This one is a Hobane watercolor brush, water brush. Um, so this one, the tip is large and it's very watery. So I use this for broad washes like sky, water, and large areas. And this one is a Sakura water brush. And the tip, I think is medium, is great for smaller details like um, tiny brush strokes for trees and other stuff. And everything fits inside a makeup bag. And here is my Etcher watercolor sketchbook. Square shape. I think the size is 8.5 inches square. And I've been working on it for about a month now. Yeah, exactly one month now. So this is the first sketch that I did at my neighborhood park when the trees were still green. So today I cannot wait to see the trees changing to a different color. finish here and I think I'm gonna sketch around here another square sketch and here's my etcher watercolors inside it has 24 half pens in it and I never clean these areas because I can always use these leftover colors by dropping water on them especially these greens when painting trees And then I have a rag for cleaning my brushes. And that's it. Let's go. So every spring, summer, fall, and even winter, I come to my neighborhood park to do seasonal sketches. And I've been living in this neighborhood for about 10 years now. So about four weeks ago, I sketched this scenery here. So now I am walking around, I'm looking around. I think I'm gonna sketch something different this time. I really like that blue house on the edge of the forest, it makes a really nice composition right there. I think I really want to sketch this scenery today. Okay, so part one is drawing. So I'm beginning with a uh, square frame, so it's easier to fit everything inside and then the date and date. And it takes a couple of minutes to visualize the size and placement of everything, the big elements in this scenery. is a forest and the size of the little house there. So after visualizing, I'm pretty sure about the size and placement, I start drawing. As you can see, I started drawing the rooftop. It's the shape of a trapezoid and then start layering the little trees around it, and then drawing the windows. The windows are like its eyes. They're really cute. And then now I'm starting to connect the clusters of forest around it in pretty simple organic contours. 
and this pole, light pole there. Some more trees or bushes around it. So when sketching a scenery, it's really important to find a focus element. So for this scenery here that I'm sketching, my focusing element is this little house. So once I determined the size and placement of that little house, I'm very sure about the size and placement of the rest of the elements like the forest because it's so easy to compare the size once you have one thing set into place. So the trees behind the little house is about the double the height of that house. So that comes really easy once the house is set into place. And the rest of the details is just really relaxing. And the sizes and the proportions are determined by the outlines, not really the inside details. So in the beginning, just relax and focus on the uh, outlines instead of uh, stressing too much about realism, like adding all, all of those details. Okay, so now as you can see, I finished drawing the outline of the top of the forest. And now I'm drawing the bottom part of the forest like the bottoms of the trees with some more little trees and bushes in front of it and tree trunks visible through the leaves. Now I'm actually starting to add the inner details after outlining like the tree trunks and using very um, simple relaxing pen strokes to suggest the shape, the growth of the evergreen tree branches, leaves, the form. There are a lot of tree trunks showing. And now I'm starting to add the grasses by the edge of the pond and also drawing the edge line of the pond at the same time. Keep adding more. This is the edge line of the pond with grass growing on it. Adding this walkway line here. There's someone walking there, a bench and the rails Okay, and now I am drawing the foreground element, the grass, right in front of me. So I'm actually drawing really fast. Instead of copying, I'm trying to just draw a really quick impression of grass instead of copying every single blade of it. So instead of copying directly, I am seeing those grass and processing it inside my head and see how to simplify with these simple pen lines. And that's how I sketch, how I simplify. And I think everybody sees and thinks in different ways. So you don't have to be exactly the same as me when you're drawing because we all have different brains. So now I'm adding these ripples using very light lines squiggly lines, straight lines, pushing very gently with my pen. Adding some final details for the forest there. Takes a bit of patience. Add another walking man and that's it. That's the drawing part. So instead of sitting on a stool, this time I'm sitting on the grass and here's the view in front of me. My feet, nice and relaxing. And the scenery in front of me is just so good to be here. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So first of all, I like to paint the sky first. I just wetted the area first with clear water. And now I'm adding these streaks of cerulean blue to suggest the sunny day sky and the white clouds on it. 
so not painting the white parts suggests white clouds. And painting over the trees too, because the trees are not totally solid. It has sky visible through them. And now I'm gonna, I wanna paint the pond. So again, just wet the area first with clear water. The water can be really fun to paint because it's like a mirror reflecting all the colors above it. So now I'm adding this yellow green that I observe and blending on this darker shade of green mixed with verdian green and a little bit brown and ultramarine blue mixed in too. I'm using medium thin brush strokes to suggest ripples and leaving some white streaks of highlight. Very similar to painting glass vessels. So I'm painting based on my observation, seeing the light and dark parts and just add the colors on. Now I'm painting the green field, the bank of the pond using light green and the orange mixed with yellow ochre for the dried grass. Same color for the bushes and trees that I see that has a golden tone. As you can see, I'm painting very lightly and I'm focusing on the warm colors for now. The medium yellow and orange colors of the trees that I see. And now I am painting the warm green, the first layer for the forest. Yellow ochre mixed with varying green. And using dotting brush strokes to show the texture of the tree. Mixing a new kind of green once a while just so there's more varieties of green for the forest. It's not just one solid kind of green there. And this is only the first layer. I will add the dark tones later in the next layers. Just adding these fresh greens for now. And just adding the last bit of colors for the first layer. Dark brown for the rooftop. And medium yellow mixed with orange for the grass in the foreground. The blue color for the house. And now I'm moving on to the second layer. I'm starting to add some red orange using small brush strokes. As you can see, I switched to my Sakura medium tip water brush to add finer details for the trees to suggest texture. So I'm using two kinds of oranges, red orange and yellow orange for the second layer for the trees. And now I'm mixing Viridian green with yellow ochre and less water, so the green looks more intense for the areas around the bottom of the forest. And for this tree here too. There are a lot of in-between spaces with darker tones of green. Okay, so now I'm mixing in brown and a little bit ultramarine blue to get an even darker tone of green for the shadows inside the forest, mostly around the bottom of the forest. Mix it, mixing in more brown to darken the green tone. A 
bit of shade color here and there as I observe, as I feel. And I'm also trying to use this darker tone of green and brush strokes to suggest the three-dimensional form of the trees merging together. So even though all of the trees are coming together, they still have their individual forms separated. So as you can see, I'm just punching, I'm pressing this dark tone of green on instead of stirring too much. I want to leave my brush strokes right there nice and sharp to suggest the texture of the forest. So I'm trying to make the two layers of paint to merge together nicely. Some brush strokes are pretty sharp, while some are, I press it a, li a little bit and mix in a bit of water to it. So it kind of merge with the, uh, the first layer instead of being too sharp. So while I'm adding these brush strokes, I'm also squeezing the handle of my water brush very gently so that there's a tiny bit of water mixing with the paint too, making the brush strokes a little bit smoother. And now I'm adding the second layer for the rooftop, a more intense brown. And some shadows on the grass area. Very thin brush strokes. And another layer for the grass by the edge of the pond. So now I'm using a lot of brown and red brown colors to suggest a warm feeling of the day and to give more contrast with the forest color. Okay, so here I am painting the second layer for the pond. So this is pretty much wet on dry. I'm using thin brush strokes to suggest ripples and also at the same time the colors of the tree above. I'm adding these warm golden colors first. The water acts like mirrors on a sunny day just reflecting everything above it. And now this picture looks warmer. Okay, time to give some more contrast. I mix Veridian Green with Burnt Sienna or Brown. So these are the reflections of the forest above. Again, I'm using very thin, relaxing brush strokes. I'm mixing more or less water into this color. So the tone looks a little bit lighter and darker in different areas to give depth to the water. So while I'm adding these brush marks, again, I'm also pushing the handle of my water brush. So there's a little bit of water coming out, creating very smooth gradients of that same color. So as you can see, the pond that I'm painting is made up of smoother areas of paint and some other parts with fine liner details using very thin sharp brush strokes. Adding some more orange color around that green there. 
Okay, now I'm moving on to the final polish part. Adding some more green thin dotting brush strokes here and there. This is pretty much done. And my final polish doesn't contain a lot of obvious brush strokes, just very lightly here and there. And adding some shade color in between the grass in the foreground. Using leftover colors of greens and blues. Okay, and now I think I need to add a little bit more warm retouches like for the, uh, for the tree around the forest for the reflections around the bottom to suggest fallen leaves fallen leaves here and there on the grass those tiny little details and painting the tree trunks with brown final bits of green around the bank and that's it so before I call it done, I want to add more contrast for the pond because it's a really important aspect of this sketch, the water reflection. So I just add this dark turquoise color and a lot of sharp brush strokes to accentuate the form of the forest reflection. And it's done. I really like the reflection there on the corner. And lastly, I'm writing down the time that I did the sketch and a little note about the day. And that's the finished art journal page. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Are there any challenges that you have been experiencing when you're drawing and painting landscapes? Just let me know in the comment section. And subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I will see you very soon next time.